Pittsburghers know John Burnett from his 36 years on the air here at KDKA, forecasting the weather, performing crazy stunts on Evening Magazine, Pittsburgh Today, and Pittsburgh Today Live, but mostly as the fun-loving guy who is the same on TV as off. John retired five years ago, but in the last couple, he's faced some major health challenges and recently got a diagnosis, suspected CTE, likely caused by repeated blows to the head while playing football. Now, last hour, Christine Sorensen, who co-hosted PTL with John for 11 of those years, shared what he and his family are experiencing now. Christine joins us now live with more on how Pittsburgh is actually playing a major role when it comes to research on CTE too, Christine. Yeah, well, Kim and Ken, CTE or chronic traumatic encephalopathy can only officially be diagnosed with an autopsy of the brain upon death. So we rarely get to talk with someone who has what's presumed to be CTE. John is already part of research happening right here in Pittsburgh to better understand the disease. <laughs> For years, John Burnett was a thrill seeker driven by adventure. But today, his walk has become more of a shuffle, his voice somewhat hoarse, his expressions diminished, and his short term memory a struggle. I miss being able to, to start a conversation like ours and see it through to the end and feel like I've accomplished something. It's a big shift from the strong guy who loved to lift people up, leap toward any challenge, and had the strength to do it even into his 60s. John's wife, Debbie, and kids, Sam and Eric, say he still loves playing with his grandkids, but it's different now. Like he was, I would almost say like hyper physical. Like, yes. you know, like, you know, yeah. jump over stuff. And like, was like the top of that, like peak physical. And so now, you know, the change is, seems quite dramatic. After tests and scans ruled out other causes for John's memory and physical challenges, UPMC cognitive neurologist Dr. Joseph Malone concluded John has suspected CTE. John played contact football for 10 years from childhood to college, including at the University of Tennessee. He estimates he hit his head 30 to 40 times a game with two major concussions. That history coupled with his symptoms and in addition to the newer diagnostic criteria for this thing called traumatic encephalopathy syndrome, led me to make that diagnosis for him. John is participating in a study at the National Sports Brain Bank at the University of Pittsburgh, which was created just nine months ago with support from big names like former Steelers Jerome Bettis and Merrill Hodge. The director of the Brain Bank, neuropathologist Julia Koffler, is studying athletes while they're alive and then analyzing their brain after death. She hopes the Brain Bank's findings will help people playing contact sports. If we have an understanding of what makes an individual at higher risk than another, I think that people can make a more informed decision if that's a risk they are willing to take on. In 2005, a pathologist here in Pittsburgh was the first to put CTE in the national spotlight after seeing it in the brain of Pittsburgh Steeler Mike Webster following his death. Since then, research has shown that repetitive head injuries and concussions can cause damage in the brain that can lead to CTE. But still very little is understood about why some develop CTE and others don't. I know people who are in their 80s who have played football and don't show any signs of cognitive changes. So we want to know what protects these people from manifesting any symptoms. But a new study from the Boston University CTE Center looked at the brains of younger athletes through college who played contact sports and died before age 30 and found CTE in 40 percent of them. The vast majority of people who are going to have this disease are not going to be professionals per se, but people who may have just had played a lot of sports in high school and college, which that applies to a lot of people. That's why the National Sports Brain Bank at Pitt wants anyone who played sports or activities with increased concussion risk to participate in their study, from rec sports to professional. This includes traditional contact sports like football, ice hockey, and soccer, to others like cheerleading, motocross, and horseback riding. Participants have to fill out an online questionnaire once a year and agree to donate their brain upon death. John's agreed to do that, meaning his legacy of helping people will continue even after he dies, with each brain used in dozens of studies over decades. If I can help anybody on this road who is on this road or will be on this road in, in the years ahead, uh, I, I feel better about being able to do that.
And by donating his brain, John's family will also learn whether he did in fact have CTE. But for now, they're taking the cards that were dealt to them and making the most of every moment together in this game of life. You just have to change your thinking and um, try to stay hopeful. You'll always, be, you'll always be Superman to us, for sure. I am who I am because of football, Boy Scouts, my mother and father, and good friends like you, and Debbie, and my kids, and I wouldn't change that. I wish I was a little clearer headed, but otherwise, my life is good. Now, the study at the National Sports Brain Bank will be long term, will evolve in phases where participants may provide blood tests or undergo scans if they're willing. So far, about 100 people have expressed interest and half have completed the study questionnaire. They're hoping more people will hear this and sign up. We've got a link at KDKA.com where you can learn a lot more if you're interested. And boy, that had to be emotional for you too, Christine. It, I mean, it was, were, it so has close. been. We still are, I mean, he's still part of our family. We've seen him at events and reunions over of course. the past yeah. several years. Yeah, yeah. So. And he and I have been getting together regularly yeah. over the last five years, so I've seen it gradually, but it's definitely over the last two years that a lot of the physical things yeah. have really accelerated. Well, you gotta love his enduring sense of optimism and yeah. his willingness to help others, being part of this study. Uh, that's John through and through, and that's, uh, it's great to see that, uh, that attitude is still there. That's yeah. what I loved about his son. He said, this is so John Burdett, yeah. you know, to, I want to get out there to help other people. That's right. what he's always been about. And so I'm so grateful that he wanted to share his story and help others. And he'll Thank continue you. to be known for that. All right. Thanks, Thank you so Christine. much, Christine.